<laughs> it's the ghost of J. Royal, dude. Happy Halloween, Royal fam. This is James from J. Royal, and of course, as usual, I'm here to talk about fragrances. And what I wanted to do on this extra special Halloween day is introduce to you 10 fairly spooky fragrances, all from the same house. They're also from the same specific line within the house. Now please make sure you stay tuned to the end because I do have a very special offer for my royal family members. The area that I'm living at right now in Miami was really nicely decorated. I saw some very, very cool decorations. See, there's my buddy right there, my fellow ghosty. And I figured on Halloween, what's scarier than reading books? I'm of course talking about Amouage's library collection, Opus 1 through 10. Now I've been a huge fan of the House of Amouage for quite some time now. I own quite a few of them but I've never really sampled the Opus collection. And thankfully, Alan from Beverly Hills Perfumery, he has all the samples that I needed. So today, we're going to see which Opus smells the best. And from what I can tell right now, what I've done is I've sprayed all 10 of these fragrances on my skin. I'm gonna go back and forth, one versus two, Opus three versus four, and whittle them down until I find my favorite. I don't have any coffee beans to cleanse my nostrils, so instead I'll just be using uh, peanut butter. You suck! So first up is Opus One. Not what I expected. This isn't a classic incense bomb like you'd find in other amouages. Like a spicy floral? Light florals, not rose or anything. And there's a, there's a kind of a cinnamon type of spice to it. Maybe cardamom in here as well. Not bad, not bad. Opus 2, on the other hand. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. <coughs> it definitely has some pencil shaving vibes, some cedar wood and pepper, but it's blanketed in this soapiness. It's a very, very bizarre combination, to be honest. You would think that the soapiness would make it more wearable and fresh, but it really just kind of clashes a little bit. Uh, I have to give the first round to Opus 1. Next up we have Opus 3. So here we have, it's definitely warm. It feels resinous, but it's a sweet resin. Uh, a benzoin, for example. It doesn't have any weird saltiness or anything. It's almost creamy. It's definitely a unisex fragrance, like all of these fragrances, but there is enough masculinity to it that I would feel confident wearing this. Number four, Opus 4. Opus IV. I think this position really goes with a Halloween theme. I'm like Dracula. I want to suck your blood. I actually don't want to suck <laughs> anything. Gay! Sickos. All right, Opus 4. Um, <laughs> ignore the face I just made. It doesn't smell bad, but it's stronger, especially when compared to the number three. This is a spicy one. Some incense, maybe a little bit of cardamom. This one feels like it has a lot of clove in it. It doesn't seem to have too much depth, just a lot of spice, some incense, but overall I would have to go with three. Opus three, it just seems like something I would wear and it's just, this one is just a bit too challenging with not enough nuance to it. Next up we have Opus five. Mmm, okay. Orus root, definitely get Orus root. Little bit of florals. It's not a squeaky clean orris root. It um, has some dirt. It's, a bit, it's been in the ground for a while, but I feel this one has a little more edge to it. Don't know if there's some dark woods in here. Opus five, nice. Opus six, here we go. Okay, so this is another spicy one, except this one has more to it. It's not just brash, spicy clove. The harsh spiciness from Opus 4 is a little more rounded. The edges in Opus 6 are a little softer. Even with all the spices in here, I could see this possibly being an early spring scent. It has that life to it. Opus 6 smells like it could be a, a discontinued Tom Ford private blend. And when I say that, I mean it really is unique and it's very interesting, but it's not for everyone. And I think guys and girls can wear it pretty evenly. 
Opus 5, to be honest, does lean a bit feminine, but overall, I would still give the edge to it just because it is really, really well blended. All right, on to Opus 7. Ooh, okay. Speaking of Tom Ford Private Blends, Opus 7 is reminiscent of Japon Noir, which is a discontinued Tom Ford Private Blend, only in its leathery feel. It has a dark, almost witch-like <laughs> smell. Japon Noir was like a red leather, while this one is a little more of a green leather. This fragrance smells like Siberia to me. It just has that character. Opus 7 really smells masculine. I mean, ladies have at it, but I think the most dominant note to my nose is leather. It does smell woody, but it's coniferous wood. It doesn't have a lot of really stinkiness to it. In fact, I would say the opposite. It's a little bit addictive. It has kind of a semi-sweet spicy quality that accompanies everything. Maybe not as easy to wear, but for my taste, this is really good. Next up, we have Opus 8. Ooh. Just kind of smells almost plasticky. It's, there's florals in there, kind of white florals, maybe saffron, but there's just this weird plastic smell, maybe a touch of resins and just these weird spices, but it's not abrasive like a black pepper would be where it doesn't sting your nostrils. It does smell a bit rounded and somewhat smooth, but it's a weird smoothness. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> Opus 7 wins. I think I need a peanut butter break. <laughs> Kinda smells like coffee. <laughs> I mean, you got beans, you got nuts. It's like the same thing. Next up, we have Opus 9. It smells almost like a new hardcover book a little bit. It's kind of not so much plastic like the other one. It's a little more waxy. Maybe some spiciness, maybe some of that clove or something. There's a little bit of an off-putting nature too, but it's not terrible. And finally, Opus 10. Oh. Oh God, okay. Yeah, that smells bad. <laughs> I honestly don't even know what they're going for here. Like, like I can't even pick out any notes. It smells, it smells like a bad bottle. <laughs> it smells like something wrong happened. It's it definitely smells rugged to me. It smells, you know, really alpha blue collar dude who doesn't really care what you think would wear, but I really don't like it. Um, <laughs> nine and 10, kind of a toss up, but I would have to go with nine. It's at least somewhat wearable. So after smelling all of these 10 Opus fragrances, what are my final thoughts? Which ones would I potentially buy? Now, before I let you guys know, I want to remind you that Beverly Hills Perfumery has all of these fragrances for sale. You can get samples of them as well, whether you're in the States or Canada. And what's awesome is Alan is doing another promotion with me. You get 20% off his entire store for two weeks starting from Halloween. You just have to use the coupon code JROYAL20, no spaces, no dashes, on the checkout screen, and you will get that 20% off. He's my number one source for niche fragrances and niche samples. His prices are amazing. The quality is great. The selection is unparalleled. Which ones would I potentially buy? The first one that I really liked is Opus 3. It's really developed nicely on my skin. It almost has a slight gourmand edge to it. It really became creamy on my skin. There's some vanilla happening now, but it still has some woodiness and a touch of those florals as well. And I'm really surprised because right off the bat, it just seemed fairly decent, but the way it's developed is very, very nice. Next up we have is Opus 5. Opus 5 is really nice because Orris Root is a note that I really do enjoy. It's still fairly unisex, but it's a fragrance that I keep coming back to. And finally, the third Opus fragrance that I really enjoyed was Opus 7. Just a beautiful, dark, green, woody fragrance with some leathery edge to it. It's not crazy animalic. It doesn't obviously have, you know, civet and castorium and all those fun notes, but it's brazen in its use of animalic leather. The leather is very prominent here. And for people that love leather fragrances, Opus 7 is one you should definitely check out. I really like it. So those are my three favorite Opus fragrances from the library collection by Amouage. Like I said, if you wanna try these fragrances out, Alan from Beverly Hills Perfumer has got you covered. As always guys, thanks for those thumbs, those sweet subs, and those cute comments. 
If you have experience with Amouage fragrances, specifically the Opus Library collection, let me know which ones are your favorites, or even better, which ones you really don't like. So this video has merely just been my opinion. If you want your own, get your own. Shout out to my sponsor, Peter Pan. Great peanut butter. If you're in the mood for more content from yours truly, there's some stuff here and here and a subscribe button under that little J Royal screen that I niftily put up.